It's not that we're seeing further into space. People are getting a lot cleverer with their compositions, with what they choose to take pictures of, and how also they frame their pictures. You have highly technical images, which show you absolutely stunning views of deep space, but you also have really homey images of what space is like from here on this planet. I love the juxtaposition of those things. A man observing Venus and Jupiter, two planets that are, appear very close together in the sky at this particular time. You can tell this is an experienced amateur astronomer because of the red head torch. Red light doesn't ruin the adaption of your eyes to the dark. So you can go from darkness and turn on a red light and turn the red light off and you'll still see the stars. Two hikers, which the photographer had seen as dusk fell in, in Yosemite, and they were lost in the park. And he went down and spoke to them, gave them directions to go in the right direction. So it's a really dramatic scene. You've got the very tiny human figures, the very dark, ominous forest, and the almost vast universe behind them. This is the last transit of Venus that we'll see in Astronomy Photographer of the Year for about 105 years. But really, this image is all about the sun. You can see remarkable detail on the solar surface brought out by a particular filter. And it reminds us, I think, that our sun is a star. It's an active thing and it's changing. And it has weather just like we do down on Earth and just like Venus has. Remember, Venus is the size of the Earth. So that gives you a real sense of the size of some of this activity on the sun. It's a spectacular and slightly humbling image. The winner of the R solar system category, it's a much different picture of the transit of Venus taken in London. And you can just see the dark disk of Venus over the sun through a heavy layer of cloud. And there was a great deal of discussion about this on Judging Day. The detail that you can capture is not there, but what is there is a real sense of what it's like to fight the elements, to see these once in a lifetime sights in the sky the elephant's trunk nebula. You can sort of see here the trunk on the left there curled round the young star that's that orangey bit in the centre. And I think I could just about see an elephant's trunk there. So this image was taken by the Bradford Robotic Telescope, which was run by the University of Bradford, and it was actually one of the first telescopes you could control over the internet in the early 90s. And in this case, Thomas Reed is only 12, and he's getting access to some top-notch kit. The Spaghetti Nebula. This is the remnants of an exploded star, a star that exploded 40,000 years ago and has shed its outer layers all over space. You're seeing the debris from such an explosion that marks the end of the star's life. And it's from explosions like this that most of the elements that make us up, all the heavy elements in the universe, are produced. If you want to know where the atoms in your body were about five, six billion years ago, they probably were somewhere like this. A very similar object to the supernova remnant. And you're seeing a very detailed look at the swirling gassy debris left over from the explosion of a massive star. The colours in this image reflect different kinds of gas glowing, probably hydrogen and maybe some oxygen glowing there. Sort of a time lapse of Mars seen in various stages during the year. You can see the polar cap at the top shrinks over the course of the images, and that's because summers come to that hemisphere of Mars and the cap shrinks. Mars this year is a huge focus of astronomical attention because we've just had the landing of the Curiosity nuclear powered laser armed rover onto the surface. You can see tens, hundreds of galaxies all bound together by gravity. Each one of those dots, not a star, but billions of stars. This is up in northern Norway, looking at a time when particles from the sun are slamming into the Earth's atmosphere and producing the beautiful glow of the northern lights. In Japan, you have an ice waterfall, and then in the top left, you've got the very familiar constellation of Orion with brilliant orange Betelgeuse or Betelgeuse shining out amongst the stars there. You would not believe your eyes if 10 million fireflies lit up the world as I fell asleep. 
A long exposure has captured the stars as they appear to spin overnight because of the motion of the Earth spinning on its axis. But in the foreground, there's this riot of fireflies flying around in a real chaotic way. So here we have the overall winner of this year's competition, a beautiful picture of the Whirlpool Galaxy by Martin Pugh. A swirling galaxy, very much like our own Milky Way. You can see arcs of star formation in those spiral arms, and you can see how the galaxy is reaching out towards a smaller galaxy with which it's interacting. Well, it's certainly beautiful, but it's also an image of cosmic violence because that small galaxy is being ripped apart by its larger neighbour. And we're beginning to understand that actually galaxies like this one, like our Milky Way, get a lot of their gas from such sort of cosmic cannibalism. It's such a stunning image. Because my dreams are bursting at the seams.